And hello, welcome to Solo Playthroughs. We are going to Scenario 5, which is the fourth Mythos pack of the Dummage Legacy campaign. It is undimensioned and unseen. And as much as I have uh, been on record not liking the changes to the Essex, the Essex County Express scenario, I love the changes that were made to Undimensioned and Unseen. It made this scenario grindy and annoying and repetitive to me to one of my favorite scenarios in Dunwich and simply by giving me a diversity of monsters that all behave slightly differently. Um, it doesn't take much from me, <laughs> I guess, right? Um, yeah, the, the original Undimensioned and Unseen had five copies of the Brood of yogg uh, and they were all the same. And it was just like, what are we doing? This just seems like a filler scenario. And now, again, we have a, a much better variety that I uh, much more prefer. So we'll get to those in a bit. Let me get this scenario card up here. Uh, so we have that like normal. Uh, Patrice uh, Hathaway is an interesting investigator. It was harder... <laughs> admittedly harder than I expected to get this thing together and to get uh, myself a deck that I felt pretty confident bringing into Undimensioned un Unseen. Uh, I try to draft my decks now using, there's an Arkham Draft website that I, that I really like. I just choose from four cards and then ultimately it just didn't work with Patrice. And during scenario three or four, I realized that it just, I wasn't going to be able to put forth a quality playthrough and I did pretty liberally sub out a lot of my level zero cards. No, I did not spend an XP for each, so anyone can call the ethics police if you want. I am uh, I'm guilty as charged. It is what <laughs> it is. What it is. Um, but um, once I did that, then this deck came to life a lot more. Is it optimal? No. Um, you know, it is what it is. I like this deck a lot. I think it will do pretty well in this scenario, and then I'm excited to finish this campaign off on my own. Uh, off camera again this is a survivor cycle i'll be back in four weeks and we'll be doing a playthrough of silas one of my faves that dude is awesome so patrice also could be awesome and i think this is a very good scenario for her let's get into her vacation album before i do that though uh for if you're just joining me for the first time your first live stream with solo playthroughs uh this is on a 25 second delay, so anything you're seeing happened 25 seconds in the past. It's usually not an issue, uh, but at the same time, my uh, my wife, Mrs. Playthroughs, is monitoring the chat. She's awesome. Be very nice to her. I appreciate it. Uh, so she will always be there. So anything that comes up in the chat that she thinks I should know about, she'll bring my attention to it, and then I'll try to check myself every so often as we go, but it's really nice to have her helping me along with that. All right, so Patrice's vacation photos. Here we are, kids. What did Patrice do on her vacation to Dunwich? So the first scenario is in the top left. That is a picture from the end of the Miskatonic University scenario, scenario one, where she ended in the dormitories and alerted the students of the insanity that was happening on campus and warned them so we did not get a an extra bad token added to the bag, but also we did not find Professor Rice. So that is a thing. So he was kidnapped. Then we went to the casino. Casino proved a little bit too much for Patrice. He was close to getting out. I had a 50-50 shot, of course, ended up uh, not in the, I already got the, the, I was already in the VIP area. I got to the last act, uh, but unfortunately, instead of getting to the exit, I ended up in the other room that's there in off that darkened hallway, uh, and I ran out of time. Uh, so because of that, I was in the casino when it collapsed, ended up taking a physical trauma as a result of that, but no other harm came except for that one physical trauma is what it is. All right, so I got, I think, 4 XP in Scenario 1, 2 XP in Scenario 2. We go to Scenario 3. Scenario 3 did not go so well. Uh, Beyond the Veil is a brutal, brutal, brutal treachery card for Patrice. Beyond the Veil, if you don't know, it goes into your threat area, and if your deck ever runs out of cards, well, you take 10 damage. So that's what happened to me. Uh, did not get very far in that scenario. I think, I, I mean, I, you can see I got a few locations out, Got a couple of clues, 
uh, but we were not able to uh, get anything done. And the hunting horror was at our location, but he is not what proved our demise. It was the beyond the veil. Uh, so I took a second physical trauma. So two physical traumas in three scenarios. <laughs> not great. Uh, so what did we do? We went on to scenario four. Scenario four, we got to the train. Uh, we had the conductor on our heels. We had a grappling horror in our midst, but I was able to evade the grappling horror, get the two clues there, and start that train, and we were able to scoot on away from that conductor uh, and got out with our lives there, so that went pretty well. And then scenario five, we got into the hidden chamber. We had an army of two whippoorwills and two... Uh, I think two hired guns following us all around Dunwich. There was a, we pulled a, a mobster boss or whatever the heck his name is in the hidden chamber. Uh, and we were able to get six damage onto Silas uh, to end that scenario. So we defeated Silas. Um, so what don't we have? We don't have the Necronomicon. Uh, and what else don't we have? Well, two of our uh, townsfolk were uh, devoured by Silas before I put Silas out of his misery, including Dr. Armitage and including uh, Francis Morgan, right? So again, Morgan was in the casino uh, and we never found him either. So he was also kidnapped along with Warren Rice. And because we were delayed, uh, Armitage was also kidnapped. So we started the scenario four with five, pe five people being kidnapped including Armitage. Now, you do get two bonus of the experience if you don't get the Armitage, so it's one of the reasons I wasn't that upset. I didn't get out of the casino uh, because I do find that two XP a lot more helpful for Patrice than Armitage himself would have been. All right, so here we are. So what are we doing now? So we are going to try to come up against the Broods. The Broods of yog Sophith. Sounds easy, right? Well, they can't be seen. They can only be attacked in a certain way generally for the most part we'll come around to that uh and now we're gonna have to figure out um how we can find them how we can see them how we can help ourselves attack them and how we can destroy them so uh we are gonna do the agenda and the act let me get the scenario card up here ding just like that all right Ask and you shall receive so agenda one rampaging creatures reports of terrifying entities rick Reeking, reeking, wrecking, reeking havoc across the countryside have caused the citizens of Dunwich to panic. Worse, the creatures seem to be invisible to the naked eye. Forced at the end of the enemy phase, move each a brood Yuxuthith enemy once toward a random location. It moves whether it's exhausted, whether it's not, whether it's engaged, it does not matter. It always moves. So they are massive, all the broods. Um, so again, they're never in your threat area. They're always at the location. They will always move. All right, cool. Saracenic script. The monsters tearing through Dunwich County are immune to traditional weapons. Only by reciting a particular incantation can the creatures be defeated? First, you must search the ruins of Wilbur Waitley's home in order to find the final sections of the otherworldly script. Only investigators of Waitley ruins may spend their requisite number of clues as a group to advance. All right. So what do we got? Uh, let me go through Patrice. I'll go through her deck and then we'll kind of figure out. I'll talk about how I spent my XP. Uh, obviously, I spent three XP on Charisma. That's really important after scenario five because I did pick up three uh, story assets, which I was happy to include in my deck, and I'll talk a bit about that in a second. All right, Patrice Hathaway. All her life, Patrice has lived for music. The soaring sonatas, the graceful arias, and the booming marches have always been her closest companions. But sometimes when she plays, she can sense some alien intelligence at the edge of her awareness. Something that watches her and waits. Something that hungers. The presence has been growing over the last month, and her increasing nervousness is starting to spoil her ability to play the violin. That's not something she can tolerate. After her last concert at the Ward Theater in Arkham, she finally decided to take action. All right, so what makes Patrice crazy? Well, she's... <laughs> She's survivor, right? She's a survivor, survivor, -y survivor, uh, in a lot of ways. Um, so she is again just a normal person, gets hung up in the occult uh, stuff that is happening all around her, and just is thrown into it. And she just she she has to put her violin career on hold while she goes and and goes against the forces of darkness that is in Arkham, right? So her stats line is four willpower, two intellect, two uh, combat, and two agility. Intellect is great. Everything else is eh, not so great. All right, so we have uh, your maximum hand size is reduced by three. So your maximum hand size is five. And then during each upkeep phase, instead of drawing one card, 
Instead, one sec, checking the setting there. All right, good. Uh, instead, discard all non-weakness cards in your hand and draw until you have five cards in hand. So do not get attached to the cards in your hand. It makes deck building for her wild because you don't want to take a lot of cards that are super neat or super situational because it's not going to work with her. You really need to take cards that have a chance of working for you multiple ways, even if it's just they have good icons, right? Uh, and, and that could be helpful. So, and you're, and you're going to be liberal on using cards for icons because <laughs> they're going to get discarded anyway, so you might as well use them. So, to counteract the fact that she has, she basically is drawing five new cards a hand, or four if you have a weakness, um, you have 42 cards in your deck. So you're going through your deck roughly every eight or nine turns. Uh, could be a little bit more than that if you have a weakness or two or a hidden card. Um, campaigns that have hidden cards are especially really hard for, for Patrice. I find a Dream Eater is A, really nasty for Patrice. I, I find uh, Circle and Dunn really nasty for Patrice. Carcosa, uh, you, there are things that you're going to want to do because again, every card in your hand will not, you're not, you're getting through your deck so much less efficiently. Uh, and her going through her deck is a big part of what she wants to do, even understanding that she's going to take one horror every time she does it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah, she's, uh, this is a really good scenario for her. A couple of practice runs that went fairly well. So uh, we'll see how this goes here. All right, so I'm going to put the two physical trauma on her. One from uh, second, uh, one from the second scenario, one from the third. And um, we'll go from there. Oh, one thing I do want to work on. I have had a couple of comments, people asking me to read out um, read out live chats that I respond to. So basically we have a comment from Sarah that says, this is such a fitting scenario for Patrice considering it features more unseen enemies like her weakness. Yeah, and that weakness hopefully remains unseen because <laughs> if things go wrong and it becomes, goes on the table, that is not a great thing. All right, so let's talk through, well, this is a story asset. I'll put this over here, great. So Patrice's unique card is Patrice's violin. Uh, choose and discard a card from your hand and exhaust the violin. Choose and investigate at your location to gain a resource or draw a card. This is a really nice, I mean, it's effectively a lone wolf, right? I mean, it's effectively Patrice's version of a lone wolf because you generally almost every turn have a card you could discard and, and now you're getting a resource every time. Two resources a turn, it really adds up. Especially, you always want resources because if there's an asset you want to put in play, if you don't play it that turn, everybody's going with your discard. So the more resources you can get, the better. I really like if I can get Patrice's Violin out fairly early. My unique weakness is, as Sarah was saying, uh, to Sarah, is watch it from another dimension. It is a hidden card. It stays in your hand. You may fight or evade this enemy while it is in your hand as if it were at your location. However, if you fail, it gets put into play and it is engaged with you. That is nasty. And it is a hunter, so that's not great. All right. And if, if it's still in your hand, though, at the end of a round, or I'm sorry, it's still in your hand when, you, when your deck runs out of cards, you get three damage because it attacks you from your hand. And that's awful. Right, so I guess especially since we're starting with two trauma, getting getting another three from this is not great, right? So we do want to find a way to get it out of our hand. Uh, its agility is a five. Its fight is a five. So obviously both of those are going to be hard to do. The nice thing though is this is not an action. There is no action fight, action evade. So you can use whatever you have at your disposal to get the stats you're going to need to be able to do that test and to get this out of your hand. All right. Um, the one thing I didn't mention is Patrice's Elder Sign effect. It's a plus one, and then after this test ends, you may shuffle all but one card from your discard pile into your deck, uh, and that's so you could leave the weakness in your discard pile and just shuffle the rest in. That's a really nice mechanic, but obviously you can never count on pulling the Elder Sign when there's, again, we only have 16 tokens in there, but still, Elder Sign is always going to be a one out of 16, right? So we're not going to see that very often in a scenario, if at all. Um, one other thing I'll say about the Watcher from Another Dimension, I my belief is, so when you draw five cards, the rules are basically, it's it's as if you draw them all simultaneously. So it's not like you can get unlucky and draw this at the same time that your deck empties, because what happens is like they're all in your hand, right? And then you determine whether your deck's up. So if this is at the bottom of your deck, you're fine. You'll still be able to reshuffle, reconstitute your deck without having to uh, have the Watcher go into your hand and immediately attack you. Uh, cause that would be kind of gross. All right. 
Well, weaknesses, paranoia. We have revelation, discard all of your resources. So pretty standard Knight of the Zealot weakness. I don't really hate it with Patrice because you're usually spending resources as quickly as you're getting them. So it's not usually that bad for her. And then also nihilism. And that, this is this came from the Jack with the Jacqueline Fine deck, and I thought this was actually Jacqueline the Fine's unique weakness. And then I'm like, oh no, no, this is a basic weakness. I, I actually had them stored wrong. So nihilism is you put nihilism into your threat into play in your threat area after you reveal, cancel, or ignore a tentacles, a tentacle, an auto lose token. You take one damage and one horror, and for two actions you can discard it. That's not awful for Patrice. Again, you. You're probably never spending the two actions. You're probably just hoping you don't pull the tentacles. Is is but you're hoping you don't pull the tentacles anyway. So like it is what it is. Uh, it's a lot worse for anybody that's canceling or negating. It's a lot worse for mystics that are canceling or negating the elder sign. If I got, I think it's you cat you cat catastrophe whatever. There's a I, there's a there is a survivor card that can cancel the elder the uh, tentacles if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that if you had that in your deck, maybe you'd want to get rid of nihilism. But for the most part. It's not that bad. So those are my weaknesses. That's my unique asset. What do we have? All right, let's go by by slots. Uh, with my yeah, so my ally slot, I I have I'm gonna do XP cards late. So I only have one level zero ally. That's not a story asset. Uh, so mysterious raven, you get to put it in for one, and as a fast action or as a triggered ability, I can discard it, take a horror, and get a clue. It's not a bad trade. I mean, you're basically and that's that's fast, right? So you're basically it's one action to get a clue for one for one horror and, and one uh one resource. It's it's not it's not that bad. All right, so then you have your uh, your accessory slot. I have the Moonstone, interesting card. Gives you a static boost of both willpower and agility. And when you discard it is when you can play it. So you can't be in your hand and play it. It has to be going into your discard pile. After you discard it, then you can play it for the three resources. So it's a little interesting mechanic that's very, very survivorish. Uh, and you got a whole idea of your discard pile being something that you can use over and over again uh, is really on point and on class. Uh, leather coat, I have two of them. Again, uh, they will, you know, which is nice, especially since I have the two uh, physical trauma. Uh, they're just nice, expendable, you know, assets, take two damage, great, out, and then you're cycling your deck, so you'll be able to get a leather coat out once or twice in a scenario generally. Uh, hand slots, I have three cards I can go my hand slots. We have an old key ring, which again I love. Uh, it's basically two guaranteed clues for the cost of one in a couple of actions. And then you have the Grave Digger Shovel, Grave Digger Shovel and I have my Meat Cleaver. I probably, could get, if I was going to optimize this more, I probably could lose the Meat Cleaver or double up on the Meat Cleaver or double up on the Grave Digger Shovel. I mean, there's there's probably better cards than that, but um, yeah, I, I, I like it. <laughs> So that's that. Uh, my arcane slots, I don't go nuts with arcane slots with Patrice, uh, and I don't double up on. I mean, again, assets I double up on less with Patrice because it, I tend to want to get them out as soon as I see them anyway, and I'm going through my deck so quick. So it's not like I'm going to have a card buried at card number 27. I'm not going to see it for 27 turns or 27 card draws. I'm going to see every card in my deck within the first eight or nine turns. So, um, so I have shriveling. And I have Mist of Early A. like to have them out there. If I don't have the right icons on my hand, they're nice fallbacks. Mist of Early A, that action efficiency of being able to evade and then move. So nice. All right, skills. What do we got? So this is where you start to see the Patrice in this deck. I probably should have more skill cards. I'll say that right off the bat. So we have a copy of Prophecy. We have, one, we have two copies of Rise to the Occasion. Two copies of Resourceful. Two copies of Last Chance. Two copies of Unexpected Courage. Two copies of Survival Instinct. You'll notice no Guts. No Manual Dexterity. Uh, no Perception. I mean, a lot of times drawing cards isn't going to be that helpful because you're just discarding them right away anyway. right? So uh, I, I much prefer to get rid of the cards that give me extra card draws and and i'll just deal with you know the just the icons and those wilds come in huge all right we have our events we have i have two events two different events to give me resources we have an emergency catch and a voice of raw and then we have uh our three events that i have one copy of and four that i have two copies of so the one copies i have one more to protection one fight or flight one hiding place hiding spot and then we have two draw to the flames love those get to draw on a counter card and then get two clues at your location and normally with patrice you'll have a way to deal with the encounter card 
either by evading it or by passing the test or whatever, because again, you're just dumping all the cards in your hand. We have two read the signs, love that. We have two spectral razors and we have two live and learns. So between drawn to the flame and read the signs, yeah, I mean, I have the, the old key ring, I have the mysterious raven, we have the grave digger, grave digger shovel, you'll see that, it, hey, we'll find a way to get clues, uh, almost guaranteed. Uh, and so that's kind of becomes less of our issue here. We have the um, XP. What did I spend my XP on? Well, again, I spent three on Charisma. I spent two XP, uh, one each, on two copies of Mind Wipe. Why do I want Mind Wipe? Well, <laughs> Mind Wipe is like a cheat code when it comes to the Bruise of Yuxothith. If they're not elite, and there are some treacheries that will make them elite, but if they're not elite, you can play Mind Wipe and you wipe out all the text in the Bruise of Yuxothith's box, except for the fact that it's massive. Now, what that means, if you defeat it, it goes to the discard pile, right? So you don't get the victory point. However, it's usually a price worth it. <laughs> price well paid. I'll pay that one victory point to get rid of this brood if it's otherwise going to kill me, right? So it's, it's not a bad trade-off. So Mind Wipe, I got two, I mean, literally have two copies of my Mind Wipe, Mind Wipe in this deck entirely because of this scenario. Uh, just ha like having another uh, way to deal with the broods that don't involve actually having to kill them uh, the normal way. Speaking of that, one card I could have taken that does something very similar in that it makes it a lot easier to deal with the broods, potentially, is Waylay. Uh, I did not take it in my deck, uh, but it's another card to look at. If you're playing a Survivor deck, this should be really sh card you really want to consider for Dumbwitch. It's basically you do an, an evade and then or if there's an exhausted enemy at your location, you can test three agility. Or sorry, you can test agility X, X being the evade value of the enemy, and then you can uh, just defeat it. Now, that's not doing damage to it, so it still falls within the terms of what's on the Brood of Yuxothith, uh, but it is a way to defeat them. Of course, though, you do need to pass that test, and if you're playing true solo, you have to pass the test twice, right? You have to evade them, and then you have to do that. So if Patrice... Number one is three resources. It's really neat, really situational. Uh, and with Patrice, I might not have enough icons in my hand to guarantee myself that I'm going to be able to pass that test twice in the same round. But it is another thing to take a strong look at. Uh, two copies of Alter Fate. I have the one XP version that came with the Return to Forgotten Age. It does cost three. The number, the three level version is way better. I will try to upgrade one or both of these before I get to the next couple of rounds. But this is a very strong card, especially, again, the Vale... Um, the, the, the Val, the treachery card I was talking about before that gives you 10 damage, what killed me in scenario three, really why I have two copies of this, because that, that treachery is going to come back in future scenarios. Uh, and then I have, there's been two XP on an upgraded Peter Sylvester. Sylvester, I have two XP on a Defiance that allows you to ignore the effects of all tokens. I got this early, probably not that great. Uh, might have wanted to spend that 2 XP elsewhere, but it is what it is. Uh, brute Force is 1 XP. I like, I don't love Brute Force because it's so situational, but one of the reasons I did put it in this deck because it's one way to potentially deal with the Watcher from another dimension, right? Because if it's a base fight, well, now I have, uh, I'm going to have th this skill icon plus 2, so I'm doing a 5 now, and I, there, I usually have another two or three icons I could add to get what I want to do a fight action against the watcher to get the watcher out of my hand. So it can come in handy, but if it came up in the right situation and I have, you know, one of the beast thralls at my location, that could, that could come in huge. Uh, but the centerpiece of how I want to go with Patrice is cornered. Uh, I have, this is an asset I took two copies of. I do want to get one of these out early. Cornered is everything for Patrice as far as I'm concerned. That ability to discard a card, get plus two for any skill test is so massive. And you could put both of them out and discard two cards and get plus four. There's no limit saying it. Each card has a limit once per test. But if you have both of them out, they can still both be used for the same test as long as you separately discard a card for each. So that would be a plus four possible. So there's a lot of nice... Nice, a lot of niceness. How about that for analysis? A lot of niceness with this card in the Patrice Hathaway deck. All right. Uh, did, did I talk about skill cards? I did. Those are good. And now we have our story assets. We have the three townsfolk that I saved. Um, so we have Earl Sawyer, we have Zebulon Waitley, and we have Professor Warren Rice. I wouldn't always take all three in a normal deck. I do so we cycle through this deck so quick, I kind of like it. Uh, and ultimately, they all have a wild icon. And, you know, they're basically just like 
they're just good cards to have for a lot of reasons. I love getting Zebulon out in this scenario. That plus one willpower is really nice. But Earl, uh, Earl gives me, and, and plus that, oh, that, that Sanity, that Horror Soak is really nice with that 1-4 there. Earl has that 3-2, and then Warren Rice has a 2-3. Um, those Soaks are, are really, really, really important uh, in this scenario a lot. And then finally, we have the Powder of Ibn Ghazi. The Powder of Ibn Ghazi is the thing that we can use to throw on the Brood so that we can see them and beat them. Uh, so we get one clue, uh, so basically one charge for each of the townsfolk that survived the Dunwich Horror based on the last scenario. We saved three, so we are going to start the scenario with three clues on it. And if we exhaust a Brood of Yoxothoth, we can throw as many of these on as we want as a triggered ability, right? So, and, and each of those will count for basically plus two in a stat if we're attacking them with the uh, esoteric formula, but we'll kind of talk about that mechanic as we go. Uh, I did have this really sorted, so I'm going to want to kind of do a, a quick shuffle here. A quick pile shuffle to make sure it's nice and uh, and randomized so we don't get all of our skills in one place and all my assets in one place, which would not help anyone. Of course, pile shuffling with Patrice is a lot more annoying because the deck is basically 60% larger. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. But it is what it is. Cool. So we are going to do that, that, and we are done. Great. What is our encounter deck? Well, I have most of it shuffled up. We have our Dumbwitch cards. We have a bunch of cards that are specific to the scenario, including some that come with the return to. We have our Beast Thralls. We have our Whippoorwills, right? That is, those are the sets that are in here. To that, we are going to add one more set. It is supposed to be Erratic Fear. Remember, I play playing with the Return to what I did. Erratic Fear, since it replaces Striking Fear, I mix all 14 cards up from both those sets, and we're just going to choose seven to throw in here uh, as we go. And uh, I just for me, it just I, I think it just enhances the replayability, uh, allows me to get the return to content return to content uh in my my gaming mix and uh, i just like how these decks kind of pan out by doing it this way so this is a recommended way to play the return to's as i've said before and uh, it's a way that i i really like so we're going to take seven cards off of this there should be seven cards here ding and we're going to shuffle these up all this kind of intersperse these a little bit to make sure they're nice and mix in with the rest of the cards. And then we'll shuffle this deck. And we have a couple of location things to handle. We gotta set the broods and we'll be good from there. All right. So locations in this scenario are pretty interesting. Uh, there are two of each. And then what the the real instructions of the game have you do is they basically want you to use one as a randomizer deck for the movement of the broods, broods and the other one uh, as the, the locations on the board. I will actually use a die uh, to determine where we go randomly. Uh, so we're going to use a die though to determine which of which is in play. So I rolled a one, I rolled a five, we're going to go here, I rolled a six, ten acre meadows in the middle, I rolled a three. Uh, Waitley Ruins, I rolled a three, and Cold Spring Glen, I rolled a one. I'm going to just take these six cards, and where is the best place to put these? I'll put them along the side here with Waitley Ruins at the bottom, everything else in between. All right. Cool. So, Dumbage Village, Blasted Heat, Devil's Hop Yard, Cold Spring Glen, and Waitley Ruins. And I'll put a die there. Great, we're going to take these five, so it's again the first, the original brood, the four unique ones, and since we had three people survive the Dumbwitz Legacy, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these, and it's going to randomly start, I'm sorry, it's going to start in Cold Spring Glen, so not randomly, is it Cold Spring Glen? I think it's Cold Spring Glen, uh, it's Cold Spring Glen, or Ten Acre Meadow, one of those two. Essex County Express, Blood on the Altar... There are exactly three. Yep, Cold Spring Glen. It was right the first time. Kids, it happens once in a while. All right, so we're going to take these five. 
and I'm going to roll a die, and we're going to put one of these in Cold Spring Glen. So I rolled a six, not helpful. I rolled a two. So this goes into play. Which one is it? It is the Brood of Yuck Sothith. It is the Swelling Devourer. Devourer. Uh, it has six combat, uh, two health, and two agility. However, the Brood of Yuck Sothith gets two health per investigator and cannot be damaged or attacked except by the ability on the esoteric formula it has. So basically, four health. When it attacks, it does one damage and two horror. Fine. Uh, I'm going to roll this again. I rolled a three, and we're going to take that out of the game. Do not know which one it is. And now we have three broods left on the side. The scenario can end when we have defeated all four broods, including the three that are on the side and the one that is in play. So great. This will be our, our brood stack up there. Everyone needs a brood stack. Cool. Dunwich Village. What does it say? It is always a relief to get clear of the place and to follow the narrow road around the base of the hills and across the level country beyond till it rejoins the Islesbury Pike. Uh, afterward, one sometimes learns that one has been through Dunwich. <laughs> okay. That's, I, I guess that's the Dunwich quote they wanted. We're good to go. So, shroud value 3, clue value 1. It has a resign ability. You hide from the creatures. There is also a triggered ability here. You borrow some hounds to track the, the creatures by scent. An investigator in Dumbage Village may place one of his or her clues on any abomination enemy in play. So, uh, these are all limit once per game. There's a, Most of those locations will have one of those instructions. Uh, and I try to use them as soon as I can so I don't have to go back to a place, right? So if there's an opportunity to use it, I probably will, including this one. If I get this clue this turn, I'll probably just throw it on this guy and, and just kind of go from there. So, and I, and I do prefer to use the location clues more than the powder of Imangazi clues, especially if I'm playing with an investigator that I feel fairly confident in my ability to evade a creature and exhaust it. So I'm going to draw my opening hand. What do we have? We have Zebulon Waitley. We have Survival Instinct. We have the Mysterious Raven. We have Rise to the Occasion. And we have Alter Fate. Interesting. So I like these two a lot. Um, the dangerous thing about, about mulliganing with Patrice is that you always end up risking saying, oh, what if I draw two more assets that I want to play, put in play that I can't? Uh, I probably would put I probably would put in play a cornered before I put in play the Mysterious Raven. So, or the violin for that matter. So let me mulligan those three. Survival Instinct, Rise to the Occasion, and Alter Fate aren't that helpful. What we get? Survival Instinct, the other one. Patrice's violin. All right, that's fine. And a last chance. Cool. Don't hate it. Mysterious Raven, we will have to put you away for another another day. Uh, and at least I won't get the one horror that you're so always so inclined to give me. All right. So my turn, we have three actions. I'm going to spend all five of my resources. We get Zebulon Waitley in play and Patrice's violin, which again takes up one of our hand slots. Now, I'm going to, I don't have any more, well, I guess like I could do a couple of things. I could exhaust Patrice's violin to uh, discard a card to get a resource and then use that resource to put the Mysterious Raven in play. But I think I just want to go ahead and get that clue and, and start that process. So what I'm going to do is... Yeah, because I have Last Chance. That's such a good card to get one one clue as I need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to discard Survival Instinct and I'm going to exhaust Patrice's Violin to get a resource. And then with my third action, because this was one action, this was two action, that was not an action, I'm going to play Last Chance and I'm going to have a, an investigation value now of a two. So Last Chance, I lose one icon from there because I have one card left in my hand. But So I get four wilds. That gives me a six Six investigating a three. What do we got? Bam! Minus one. We get a clue. And I'm going to use that ability just to throw that clue onto the brood. And that is fine. Now, it's a little dangerous. There is a... There are a couple of, of cards that will uh, make me remove that clue. But, again, I'd just rather do that ability and not have to worry about coming back to Dunwich. 
and hopefully that sticks around for a little bit and we can kill that bird a little bit easier once I get the esoteric formula. Great. So now what? We go to the enemy phase. Now, the one dangerous thing about having this brood here in a place that's connected to Dunwich Village is that it could end up on me, but it's not going to move to the end of the enemy phase, so it won't actually attack me in the enemy phase, even if it moves there. Um, but then it just means I'm going to need to evade it, and it's not action efficient. So you, I'm going to roll this die. I rolled the three. So this guy is moving to Devil's Hop Yard. Devil's Hop Yard is up there. Uh, it is not a, contrary to popular opinion, it's not a microbrewery, because uh, it sounds like it should be, uh, at least to me. We're going to move the brood over to Waitley Ruins, because that is two away from Devil's Hop Yard. So again, the locations in this in this scenario are a little weird. So it's like a big ring up top, and then everything down here is is more or less a, just a big diamond. Um, and that these three are connected and these three are connected. So that's the enemy phase, upkey phase. I'm going to ready Patrice's violin. I'm going to discard all non-weakness uh, cards, which is the Mysterious Raven. I draw five. I draw them simultaneously. There are no weaknesses, so no revelation effects that I need to carry out. And then I'm going to get my one resource, which is something I often do forget to do when I'm playing as Patrice. I like, pull five cards. I'm like, oh, what did I get? And then I'm like, oh, wait, I got to get a resource too. Some options here, the Moonstone, it'd be a little unfortunate to not get the Moonstone in play. But I'm also looking at read the signs. I did not get a quartered yet, which doesn't make me all that excited. But uh, sooner or later, it will come. All right, let's uh, do the Mythos phase. So we're going to put a Doom on the agenda. We draw the top and counter card. Do not be a Beast Thrall. Towering Beast, Peril, attached to the Brood of Yuxothleth in play. If that enemy is at your location, take one damage. Attached enemy gets plus one fight and plus, plus one health. So this jerk now has five health. And that's not great. So we shall see. Uh, we're going to... That does not surge. It just has Peril. Okay, fine. I thought it surged for a second. Which would have been very bad. I mean, I do have a Mind Wipe. The problem is, so if I had Mind Wipe, how would that work, right? Uh, basically, it would give this guy three health instead of five. And uh, it would allow me to damage it with a method that doesn't include the esoteric formula, right? Which is nice. Um, so we'll see how I want to do that. Um, that's, that's, not a, that's not a great card. I will put a die on there to remind me of the plus one. And we'll see. So I'm going to go... I will move to 10 Acre Meadow. Do I want to go up north? I want to go up north. Not be in a location where that guy might end up at. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Cold Spring Glen. No, again, we need to get a Waitley Room and suspend two clues. Uh, fine, I'll go this way. So I'm going to Blasted Heath. Uh, blasted Heath is Shroud value 4, Clue value 3. Uh, you lure the creature into a patch of sand. Investigators in Blasted Heath may, as a group, place up to two of their clues on an abomination enemy in Blasted Heath. All right. Group limit once per game. So there's three clues there. Uh, I'm sad to do it. Yeah, I think I try to get two of them instead of worrying about the Moonstone at this point. Still have... Alter Fate, choose and discard from play a non-weakness treachery that is not a... T I mean, I could discard Towering Beasts, but that's going to cost me three. Is that crazy, though? A plus one health is bad. <laughs> that's really annoying. Do I do it? It makes it a seven. It's going to cost me three. Uh, I'll leave it there for now. So I'm gonna. I'm not. If I'm closer to attacking it, I might. I might consider it. But we'll see. We'll just leave it there for now. So I'm gonna play. Read the signs for two. So I'm not gonna get the moonstone shard in play. But that's or the moonstone, not the shard. I'm not gonna get the moonstone in play. Um, but I think that makes sense. So I'm gonna spend two. I'm gonna add my willpower to my skill value for this investigation. The investigation is my skill value is. Uh, 
is intellect. So right, so I'm doing a two to a three. I'm sorry, two to a four, but I get to add my willpower. My willpower is four, five. So I have a seven to a four, and I'm going to add resourceful. Four, yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to add resourceful, and I'm going to do a eight to a four. And if I succeed, I get to get two clues. All right. And now this would, if there was any, this is a great card in like circle and done because it ignores like any, um, any triggered effects that are literally on the location card. Uh, but obviously we don't need to worry about that in this case. So eight to a four, I pull the skull minus one for each brood of Yoxothoth in play. That's one. So we get two clues. Resourceful triggers. So this event would be in the discard pile. The skill card would go on top of that. Resourceful triggers. Since I succeeded, I can get myself a survivor card. I'm going to get the mysterious raven. I'm going to then use Patrice's violin to discard the moonstone shard to get a money. And then I'm going to put the mysterious raven in play for one and then as so i used three actions i moved i investigated i got two clues and then i played the mysterious raven but i still it's still my turn i can discard the mysterious raven take a horror and get a clue at my location right so i have three clues plenty of clues to get to waitley ruins and start advancing this scenario right so we have our enemy phase Enemy phase, this guy is going to move. Where is he moving to? I rolled a five. He's going to Cold Spin Glen, back from whence he came. And then upkeep phase, we're going to ready Patricia's violin. I'm going to discard the two non-weakness cards in my hand. We're drawing five cards, one, two, three, four, and five. And what do we get? We have a weakness. So we now resolve all revelation abilities for weaknesses in, in a row. Nihilism is going to go in my threat area. Right there. I'm going to move this over, make room for a counter card discard pile. Deal with that. All right, so nihilism. Again, every time I pull a auto uh, lose, I take a damage and a horror. I could spend two actions to discard it. We'll see. It's early in the game. I might, but I don't know. It seems, uh, it seems sketchy. All right, I'm going to get a resource. Now, spending that one resource on the Mysterious Raven... I mean, one thought I had was I could have gotten last chance and just tried to get the clue the old-fashioned way, but that four was is what it is. I felt it was safer to do the Mysterious Raven, uh, but now I'm kind of wishing I had that resource because I do want to get the Shriveling in play uh, just to have it. So we'll see what the encounter cards do to me. So we're going to put a resource, uh, our second Doom on the agenda. We draw on a counter card. It is a Whipperwool. Hello, Whipperwools. Why do I hate you? <laughs> God, so annoying. Mm. All right, what's going on? Um, I'm going to discard Spectral Razor, and that's a, just a triggered ability, and I'll get a resource. I'm going to spend my first action to get another resource. I'm going to spend my second action to play Shriveling, and that has four charges. Again, if I were to play Mind Wipe, having an ability to do multiple damage at once. Uh, would be really potentially pretty clutch against this this dude. And with my last action, I'm going to move to Devil's Hop Yard. What does it say? Uh, Shroud value two. Oh, Blasted Heath, by the way. The summits are too round and asymmetrical, or oh, asymmetrical to give a sense of comfort and naturalness. And sometimes the key silhouettes with a special clearness, the queer circles of tall stone pillars with which most of them are crowned. And then we have Devil's Hop Yard. Still others try to explain the Devil's Hop Yard, a bleak, bloated hillside where no tree, shrub, or glass blade will grow. Um, on here, uh, recent downpours made the hop yard muddy and difficult to slog through. The Their triggered ability in this one, the creature follows you into the mud. Each investigator in Devil's Hop Yard may place one of his clues on an abomination enemy in Devil's Hop Yard. Group limit once per game. Here it says, uh, on Blasted Heath, the ground here is loose and barely supports your weight. All right, so Patrice is here. We get one clue on there, and that's fine. Enemy phase. This guy's moving again. I roll the five. Cold Spring Glen. He stays right where he is. Upkeep. This goes there. These both get discarded. Oh, enemy phase. Whipperwool moves to Devil's Hop Yard. I draw five cards. Oh, 
Sorry, I took one too many. So we have upgraded Peter, we have cornered, we have drawn to the flame, last chance, and Earl Sawyer. Amazingly, I think I'm going to be playing cornered before I play Peter, just the way this is played out. Yeah. All right, I get a resource. I want to get a cornered out quick because it can make a huge difference in this scenario. All right, we put the third Doom on the agenda. The encounter card is the creature's tracks. Peril. You must either take to horror or spawn a set aside brood of Yaxothoth at a random location. I'm not taking the horror. We will get another one of these puppies in play. Uh, so I'm going to roll this die first. I rolled a two. So that comes off. It is the original, and then we're going to put him where? We roll the three. We put him in Devil's Hop Yard. Of course we do. <laughs> it's great. All right, so the original, what's his deal? Um, so he is a 6-1-3. He's massive like the other ones. Uh, again, he's the original. I believe there's a chance of putting it out of business, hopefully. Uh, Brutal Yorks out there gets plus one health, so he only has two health, and he also can't be damaged except by the esoteric formula. I might try to evade him, and then what I can do with that is I can add some of... Uh, my powder on top of him and get him good and ready for destruction later. All right, so Creature's Tracks is now discarded. What am I going to do? I'm going to... Uh, that's a w wish I had. And if I evade, play cornered, move. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to be drawn to the flame, which is a little bit unfortunate. All right, so I need to evade first. How am I going to do this? I'm going to spend... Um, I have a two. Uh, Earl Sawyer gives me a wild and another agility. So that's three, four. Be four to a three. That's not a lot. Last chance only works if I'm committing... Yeah, last chance only... Uh, it's, it can be... I can't commit another card to a, a, a test. Uh, if I use last chance, so right now last chance is only worth one icon, which is uh, isn't isn't great. Um, could make it worth two. This also seems silly. Four to a three. Four to a three is rough too, because now there's two broods in place, so the the skulls are now minus two. Don't have to worry about tablets or elder things. You know, and there's only one cultist, and that's not that bad either. All right, well, all right, I'm going to choose and discard a card. And I'm going to choose and discard, Peter, I love you, but I can't. I'm going to choose and discard Earl Sawyer. Nope, not Earl Sawyer. I'm going to choose and discard, I'm not getting clues anyway. Definitely not getting clues. Oh, and, and the Whipperwool's there, so actually I have, I'm even minus more than I thought. Yikes. I choose to discard, drawn to the flame, and I get a resource. If I play cornered now, I'm going to take an attack of opportunity, which is going to give me two and two. Not sure that's so crazy. I'd be doing a three to a three because of the whippoorwill. The other option I could do, though, is I could just move. Right? If I'm going to take an attack anyway, an attack of opportunity anyway, I could just move to the Waitley Ruins. And I take attack on the way out. The, again, these guys are massive. Which, that might make more sense than trying to uh, get cute here. I don't love going to four damage. I, but if I'm going to do that, I might want to hold on to draw to the flame. Think this through real quick. All right. <sighs> Yeah, these are this is a little this is an unfortunate array of cards. What I picked up. I mean last chance looks good. But I just I needed one more agility thing here to, to really feel good about where I'm at. Uh, I can put one I can do this. I can put a clue on there and use this ability while I'm here with the brood. So I'll put a marker there to indicate I've done that. Yeah, I think I move I'm going to take the attack anyway. I think I move and just take it that way. So I move to Waitley Ruins. It gives me an attack of opportunity, which triggers before I, I successfully leave the location. So it gives me four damage. I'm going to put two more horror on Zeb 
and just I really love the, that horror soak that he provides, right? So I just got super lucky that I, I just happened to roll three, right? I have a one out of six chance to, to roll the worst number possible, and of course, nailed it. All right, so Shroud value three, clue value two. Uh, Whaley Ruin says, uh, it was as though a house launched by an avalanche had slid down the tangled growth of the almost vertical slope. Uh, Shroud value three, clue value two. Every investigator at Whaley Ruins gets minus one willpower. I can hurl a nearby canister of paint at the monster. An investigator in Whaley Ruins may place up to three of his or her clues on an abomination enemy in Whaley Ruins group limit once per game. Fine. I'm going to now discard Peter. Use Patrice's violin. Get a resource. And then I'm spending those two resources with my second action. Because again, I moved as my first. My second action, I'm putting cornered out. And then my third action is I just get those two. Well, third, let me advance the act. That will work. Uh, Armitage did not survive. Oh, right, I should remember this. Uh, each investigator puts one set aside as like a formula into play. Oh, why did I do this? <laughs> I knew this. I'm not advancing the act because. It's Again, return to is you need to rely on your experience with this these campaigns. I'm gonna do that next scenario, and you'll see in next next round, and you'll see why. I did not advance that. <laughs> Take those clues back. Um, again, uh, I'm gonna play draw. Before I put cornered out too, let me see what this encounter card is. I am gonna play drawn to the flame. I draw the top encounter card. What is it? The creature's tracks. Wow. Can spawn another brood at a random location or take two horror. I'm gonna take two horror this time. Yeah, I can't deal with a hundred broods going around here. Too many broods! And then I get those two clues. Done. The problem is next next turn, remember I have minus one willpower there, and the willpower is gonna be on top of me. So if a brood goes down, I'm already at minus two. So my willpower will be at a three, including Zebulon Wheatley. Which is awesome. And now with my third action, I'm going to play cornered. So I'll kind of review that. I moved with my first action. My second action, I played drawn to the flame. It got two clues, also drew in a counter card. And then my third action, I put cornered in play. All right, enemy phase. The Whipperwool is going to move to Whaley Ruins. Now we're going to move these one at a time. So I'm going to roll this die for the original brood. I rolled a five. He's going toward Cold Spring Glen. He's already there. We're rolling for the brood of Yuck Sothit that just came in. I rolled a two. Where's he going? He's going to Blasted Heath. All right. Fine. I could put... Get over there, put two clues on him. The old-fashioned way. This guy's five health, which I hate. All right. Upkeep phase. That readies. This goes out. I draw my five cards. Oh, wait, did I have a weakness? No, I didn't have a weakness. Uh, five cards. I got another weakness. So it is uh, paranoia. Discard all my resources. I had none. And then you draw cards. Then you take a resource in that order. So I still get the one resource I would have gotten anyway. Beautiful. Uh, we are going to the mythos phase. We put the fourth doom on the agenda. And we are going to grab an encounter card. What is it? Put unhallowed country to play in your threat area. You cannot play ally assets. Treat the printed text box of each ally asset as if you control as if it were blank. So I don't even get the minus one uh, on Zebulon Waitley to allow me to uh, deal with unhallowed country. I probably wouldn't draw the card anyway. Again, those triggered abilities are always optional, and I, those reaction abilities, I wouldn't want to draw a card at the end of my turn anyway, because I'm just going to have to discard it, so what's the point? Exactly. All right. Mist of early A is interesting. All right, now I'll advance the agenda. Bing. Look at that. Guess what? All right, so... Uh, Dr. Armitage is sacrificed. Using the information contained within the ruins of the Whaley homestead, you are able to transcribe the remainder of the formula previously used by Dr. Armitage to destroy the beast that plagued Dunwich. However, the endeavor set you back several hours. 
Dun, dun, dun. All right. So if Amortizer survived, we would have been fine because he's faster than we were without him. Uh, so I get an esoteric formula and we add a Doom to the agenda. Why did I stall? Right, because Doom on the agenda, we were going to advance next turn anyway. And that's just the better play. Cool. This comes out of play. We go to Act 2. They must be destroyed. Uh, with the formula in hand, you finally have the means to destroy the creatures wrecking havoc Dunwich. Dunwich but only if you can survive long enough to feed as many broods as you can if there are no more copies of broods in play or off to the side or set aside, then you just advance that way. Cool. Uh, it's, this whipper wool is super annoying. <laughs> I think I put the Mr. Early A in play because they're just, it would be a, give me a good way to evade some things. So I'm going to discard Survival Instinct. Use Patrice's violin, get a resource, spend my two resources with my first action uh, to play Mr. Early A that comes into play with four charges. All right. So, looking fairly strong there. We now have. I'm trying to think if I should try to wallop this. Uh, Whipper wool. Wall of the whipper wool. This is a good question. If I engage him and I have one action left and I could do a combat. I also want to pass that test on Waitley. And I'll have an option to I'll have I'll always have a chance to, to pass it. But again, it's with the whipper wool there, again I'd be doing a three to a three, which is really bad. But these whipples are super annoying. All right, so I'm going to engage the whipple with my second action, and then I'm going to fight the whipple. I'm going to discard. Well, it doesn't really matter because I can discard it for two. Or I can play it for two, and then prophecy. Since there's five doom in play, uh, I would get two here. So this would be plus four. So I'd be doing a six to a two minus one. So it'd be a five to a two to get rid of the Liverpool. I think those are good enough odds. Right, I don't even want to use Shriveling because I'm, I'm at Waitley Ruins, so it's minus two anyway, so it doesn't it doesn't matter. And, and Zebulon Waitley, his text box is treated as if it's blank. So all that is great. <laughs> it's five to a two. What are we doing? Bam, uh, reveal another token. If I fail, I take a horror. I pulled the minus two, so five to a two, I succeed. Whipperwool is defeated. We all rejoice. End of my turn. I have to test on Hallowed Country. I'm testing a, a four to a three. I, again, I don't get the bonus from Zeb. Zebby Poo. So it's a four to a three. I would love I would love an Elder Sign, actually. Can I call for that? Give me an Elder Sign. Give me anything but Auto Lose. Oh, minus one for each brood in play. There are two, so that modifies to a... Uh, two to a three, I lose. So Zeb is still treated as if he's blank. And now we go to the enemy phase. Enemy phase, we're going to move this guy first. Where is he going? I roll the one. He's going to Dunwich Village to the other side of town. And then we go to move this uh, brood. He's going toward Waitley Ruins. So he comes back over here. Might go try to mess him up a little bit. Uh, it's going to be a little hard without Zebulon. Uh, active though. All right, so I pull five cards in the upkeep phase. One, two, three, four, five. Do I have a weakness? I do. The Watcher is in my hand. How are we on our deck? Oh, I got like five turns to start dealing with him. All right, not great, not awful. And we'll just see how that goes. I do have Brute Force in my hand, so maybe this is a good time. Take a turn, get rid of him. Get rid of the Watcher and put the Leather Coat in play, especially since I already have four damage. All right, so then I'll, I'll hopefully this brew will just come to me uh, and then I can deal with him next turn, but we'll see. So, meet those phase. You put, oh, did I get a resource yet? Nope, we get my resource. Meet those phase. You take all the Doom off play. We're advancing the agenda. It says, an old pickup truck rolls to a stop along the weathered trails of Dunwich. The driver, Joe Osborne, calls out to you through a shattered driver's side window. The truck's engine still running. 
It's over at the Eric's farm, he shouts. Dunn blasted their place apart, poor Henry and Martha. You ask Osborne for the location of the Eric's homestead, and it confirms your worst fear. For that attack to have occurred recently, there must be more of the monsters on the loose. Shuffle the entire discard pile into the encounter deck and spawn one of the set-aside brood of Yuxothos at a random location, if able. All right. So this is going to be shuffled. Now, that is one downside. If you use Mind Wipe, don't get that victory point. The thing doesn't go on the victory display. And then all of a sudden, you pull it off the top. Eesh! That's not great. This is Patrice Visiting Spirit Isle. Uh, yeah, so Teresa says that this is Patrice Visiting Spirit Isle. Yeah, it's about right. <laughs> it's about right. Um, cool. So, so Agenda has advanced. We pull our encounter card. Oh, we have to spawn a brood before I forget. So I rolled a one. So we're getting this one. We have one left. And it is the Amorphous Terror. And the Amorphous Terror is going to spawn where? At Devil's Hop Yard with his buddy. The Amorphous Terror, uh, after you enter its location or enters yours, you test willpower three. If you fail, you take a horror. It only has two health. They're very. It's very almost identical to the original uh, with the exception that you have to do a test when you enter its location. Right? So it is... All right, uh, my turn. I'm going to put the leather coat in play. This is a lot of stuff in front of us. Cool. I am going to now uh, try to get rid of the watcher. So how am I going to do that? So I have, I'm going to commit brute force. That gives me a base fight of a five. Uh, and again, I'm fighting a five. I'm just fighting it in my hand. I'm committing rise to the occasion since, again, it's a five to a two. It is plus two. I can commit rise to the occasion even if I'm doing a brute force because it's all about my base value, right? My base value is only two. So it's, that makes it an eight to a five. Uh, and for kicks, I will... Man, Patrice. I'm uh, not going to get that resource, but that's fine. I'm going to make sure that my, the only thing I'm, I'm defending against now is the minus four. It's like, how paranoid am I? Uh, if I added any more to this, it's so nuts. I'm really trying to get rid of unhallowed country, though, too, which is part of my calculus here. And of course, skulls are now minus three. Ah, whatever. I'm a 14 out of 16 to succeed. I am going to hold on to Spectral Razor. That's stupid. Nah, it is what it is. 14 out of 16 to succeed. What could go wrong? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, so I pulled a minus two. All right. So I successfully uh, dealt with the watcher. He just gets discarded and no harm, no foul. If I had failed that, he spawns. He would be engaged with me and that would be super not fun. All right. These are both committed. They go there. That was my... Second action. Leather coat was the first. Doing that was my second. With my last action, I think I hold on to this to try to get rid of Unhallowed Country. I think I stay right there. Last action, I'm going to take a resource. And now, at the end of my turn, I'm going to test Willpower 3. It's a 4 to a 3. I'm discarding this with Cornered. Let's put a marker on there to show that I used Cornered finally. So I'm doing a 6 to a 3 to get rid of Unhallowed Country. Minus one on Hello Country is out. Cool. What was the... Uh, did I forget to draw a weakness? The, or uh, an encounter card? Shoot. Yeah, I drew him. I never drew an encounter card. Ah. Right, because that was last turn. Yeah, encounter card was... Uh, awesome. Undo it all. <laughs> what did I do? These go back in my hand. This is in my hand. Yeah, these four are in my hand. This is in my hand. All right. Uh, attracting attention was the weakness I should have drawn, uh, and I just never did it. So each brood moves one step closer to me. Isn't that cheerful? That goes there. This goes there. That's a bad That's a bad card. Might be able to kill one of them. Could probably kill this guy. 
that's fine. Oh, no, the country is still in play. And that's fine. Um, done. Now I draw that Surges, so I draw another encounter card. There are no investigators at the same location as a Brood of Yuxothith. Ruin of Destruction against Surge. Otherwise, each investigator at the same location as a Brood of Yuxothith. Test three agility for each point he fails by. He or she takes one damage. Well, that's not good. I like the original way I did this so much better. <laughs> Are you serious? Um, yikes. I don't want the Moonstone in play. Oh, this is really bad. I can literally only get up to a 4 to a 3. Definitely not getting the Watcher this turn. Alright, I'm going to discard Leather Coat. This resource should go back to. Alright, so I'm discarding Leather Coat to give me... Uh, uh, I'll discard Brute Force. So it gives me plus two for Ruin and Destruction. The good thing is they don't attack me, but the bad thing is that the damage, um, I don't have much of a damage shield right here. So I'm doing a four to a three. I cannot increase it any further. I definitely had a minus one of the zero. Now I pulled a minus two, so that's one damage. Which isn't great, but could have been worse. All right, now I'm going to try to kill that guy, I think. Uh, so I'm going to use the ability on uh, Dunwich, where is this? Whaley Ruins, to add uh, two uh, clues to the, that brood. I might take one of those back, we'll see. But I've used this ability for now. Uh, let me do this math. So I only have to do two damage to it using the esoteric formula. This attack uses willpower instead of combat. Uh, and if plus two for each clue on the attacked enemy. So right now, if I leave it as is, now the corner should be ready. Um, corner doesn't exhaust, exhaust. That's a mental thing I do just to kind of help make sure where I'm at with the game state. Worst case scenario, if I get attacked by the brood, this brood, it doesn't kill me. So I have to kill this brood, though. If I get attacked by both, I'm definitely dead. So I have to basically kill that brood this turn for sure so i'm going to attack with uh it's a four ten to a six nine to a six because of the minus one on the weightly ruins and i don't get zeb so all his friends call him zeb for real uh I, the base value would be a six to a four so i would have I would have the ability to play Rise to the Occasion. Didn't put that in there. Be 7, 11 to a 6, 10 to a 6. But then the second one's going to be hard. The second one's going to be really hard. All right, let me not mess around with this too much. All right, so I'm going to discard Spectral Razor, use Cornered. That gives me a 11 to a 6. For that, because it was 10, 9, yeah, 10, 11 to a 6 for 1 damage. Oh! <laughs> Tentacles. I take a damage and a horror. I mean, Zebulon's useless right now anyway, so I'm just going to get rid of him. <laughs> it's got to be kidding me. Uh, of course I pull the tentacles. That's so... I expected. Why do I expect anything else? All right, now I'm going to commit Rise to the Occasion. And that is a 10, 13, 12 to a 6. If I pull the tentacles of the den, I'm dead. <laughs> Which is just, just to guess these way these playthroughs are going to go for me right now. Because, like, <laughs> I have great runs off camera, and then I get on camera, and it's just been brutal. Uh, minus 3. Great, I get one damage to this brood. Bam, and now we're going to do it again. I'm going to use cornered, and that gives me a, again, 11 to a, it's a 11. <laughs> this is playthrough to sneeze, God bless you. Uh, 4, 10, 12, yeah, 11 to a 6. For a second damage, can I kill this brood once and for all? Man, this is bad. Hey, Elder Sign. All right, so do well. Let's we we'll go in order. So last in, first out. Uh, so I get to take all these out of here except for one card. I'm gonna leave. 
par par leave that paranoia, and I'll shuffle this up. Definitely need to get some more allies. I need to get some soak out real quick. So the Elder Sign triggers. Now note if any skill cards, if I had committed, they get discarded after this Elder Sign effect actually resolves. Um, so they would actually stay in the discard pile. But um, because I discarded the card as part of cornered, that stays in the discard pile and everything gets shuffled back into my uh, hand. Um, this is the second damage to this brood. So this brood is dead. These clues just go away. That's a victory point. And we get... Um, we go to the enemy phase. So beginning of the enemy phase, he attacks me. I take one damage, so it gets me one away from death, and I take two horror. So I'm at six and four over here. Uh, end of the enemy phase, I'm going to roll a die, see where this guy goes. I rolled a two. He goes to Blasted Heath, so he's going to go back to Dunwich Village, and it'd be great if this dude will go far, far away as well. I rolled a five. He goes to Cold Spring Glen. This will go back in the bag. Probably gonna have to spend the next turn to get rid of that because I can't risk it, which is insane. Oh, end of my turn, I do have to test that. It's a four to a three for Unhallowed Country. <laughs> tentacles would, it's forced, I have to test it. Uh, tentacles would mean game is over. So I should have done this at the end of the turn before the enemy phase. No tentacles, please. Minus three. All right, on Hello Country still. So that means I can't even put allies in play until I actually um, succeed on that. So that's super fun as well. All right, upkeep phase. I discard all non-weakness cards in my hand. I only have a weakness card, so I draw four. Rise to the occasion, Spectral Razor, Moonstone, and Peter Silvestre. Unfortunately, I can't play Peter, uh, but I get the one resource uh, from... Uh, Patrice. All right, from uh, from the upkeep, not from Patrice. I will be able to play the Moonstone Shards. That will help. So I can get a resource from Patrice and then go from there. All right, meet those phase. First Doom on the second agenda. And we draw. What do we get? Eager for death. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I'm going to foul this. That's just what's going to happen. <laughs> wow. Um, testing. Uh, two willpower increases till this test difficulty for each damage on you. I have six damage, so I'm testing eight willpower, kids. Um, yeah, that's just gonna be a thing. I mean, let me think about this. Eight willpower. I could use rise to the occasion because it is an eight. Uh, the difficulty of the test is an eight, so it's a four to an eight, obviously. So that would give me up to seven. If I discard Spectral Rage, it gets me up to a 9. <laughs> sure. I mean, just to get lucky, I the 2 horror is bad. It's bad, bad. Again, Tentacles kills me. Do not want those. Bam! Cultist. Oh, I'm going to die. So I pull the cultist, reveal another token. If you fail this test, take a horror. <laughs> and if I fail this test, I'm going to take two more horror. Uh, so yeah, this is it. I need a minus one or better. This night is over. What a egregiously bad playthrough this was. <laughs> oh, man. I'm glad I spent all my time getting this good Patrice deck. Give me a minus one or better. Minus two. That's three horror. I die by horror. Wow. Yeah, that's about appropriate. Okay, well, Undimension and Unseen. It's uh, it's really good. <laughs> it's so much better with the return, too. Um, what's up, Phoenix? Yeah, oh, yeah, dude, get your workout in. That's great. Uh, almost as bad. Yeah, this is really bad. <laughs> um, I, I mean, this is one of those playthroughs that I'm like, I don't even know what I could have done different. That was that... um. Attracting attention was just really unfortunate timing. Uh, pulling the tentacles prevented me from getting the uh, the leather coat out. Well, I wouldn't be able to get the leather coat out anyway because I had another brood there. I could have probably evaded him though, right? Because if I if I succeed, damage, damage, I play the miss of early a, I can evade the other guy, right? And then I I have I I um. Did I, did I use those clues? No, I didn't use those clues. Yeah, then I could have... Right, so I still have these three clues. So if I didn't pull the tentacles, 
I kill the first brood, I evade the second brood, I put my, my powder my from Ibn Ghazi on top of it, um, and we're just in a much a much stronger place. Um, you know, I don't get attacked, I have this turn, I get rid of nihilism, maybe get a leather coat out there. But yeah, pulling the cultist and then pulling the, the minus two is a just a, a beautiful touch. <laughs> It's a really special way to end this, to end this uh, whole thing. And the crazy thing, I mean, Unhallowed Country was really jamming me up. I couldn't, I just couldn't get on top of it. Um, so that is that. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah says, oh, that changed really quickly. Yes. And uh, Phoenix Knight says, yeah, almost as bad. Uh, I get, I'm assuming the cultist as compared to the tentacles, just because of the extra horror. Um, so yeah, it just uh, totally turned. It totally turned. I mean, the, but it really starts to turn where, right? I'm in Devil's Hop Yard. I, I put a random, I decide to uh, put a random thing in play. And uh, right, I got two of those in a row. That was super gross. <laughs> this was all really amazing. Um, I got the creature's tracks. So I put one in play and where does it go? It goes where I was. And I had to take that attack of opportunity because I wasn't set up to deal with it because again, you're you're cycling five cards. Those five cards might not be the greatest thing you need at that that on the exact on, on that exact turn. Uh, and all of a sudden, I take the two and two there. I pull another creature tracks. No way was I risking that again. Uh, so I had to take two more horror. So all of a sudden, I have four horror. I mean, you think about it. I died by horror, and I had Zebulon Waitley in play from the first round. So like, I basically took eleven horror in, in like seven rounds. Uh, we got a victory point though, so um, I promise you in my warm-ups I did all four of these suckers, and um, it's fun, I guess. I mean, true. Look, it, it's back to the same conversation of should you play this game true solo? Uh, if you're not ready for some swings, no. Um, I, I just prefer it that way. But I'm also I treat I usually will treat this game like a video game where if I'm just playing for fun, I'll just restart it. And like whatever, I'll treat it like Gloomhaven, right? Where you lose a scenario, you just restart it. Um, and I have no problem with that. For some reason, though, in this game, people uh, seem less inclined to do that. And like that's that's great. But however, whatever, however you enjoy your games, play them that way. I don't I don't really care. Like you want a house rule or something? Fine. Like do whatever you want to do. Um, so, but uh, Patrice is strong. I I don't know where she fits for me. I mean, her there's a little a little bit gimmicky um, for me for my taste. I mean, I pre- and I prefer the consistency of she does have consistency to her, but it's almost like people like love like Amanda Sharp. Like it's that whole thing of like cycling through your deck quicker and like committing a whole bunch of cards. Like Winifred Havamuk. Like they're just not my preferred style of play. Like I I just like like something like Silas and Tony Morgan or Ursula where you know there's just that built in obvious strength and you can kind of hold on to your strong cards and you can kind of make them work in a way, um, you know, over the course of a scenario, um, that with, uh, Patrice, I mean, you're kind of just riding the wave. You need to be super flexible, but, um, you know, it just, you get stuck. I mean, I had one, my first, my first attempt at scenario four, I think I pulled a mobster the first round and I just wasn't in any place to deal with it, uh, failed like three evasion attempts in a row and, and then it attacked me and I was like, all right, let me just restart. I'm just restarting this sucker because it's not worth playing this one out. Um, so you can get really stuck if you just get the wrong cards at the wrong time and you, you're just like, oh, I don't, I just don't have the right icons. So, um, but that was that. I will, uh, I will take this L. It's a kind of a trend. We'll come back. I'm going to start from scratch again with Silas. We're not, I'm not going to try to do what I was doing before. I'm just going to do a whole new thing. Stick with the Survivor Cycle, but I'm going to build a different story with Silas, and I'll do what I did this time with some pictures and kind of talk people through what the narrative was. i um, super excited about Silas. If I lose with him, you might see a grown man cry. If that's what you're into, make sure you tune in. Um, and then we have Stella Clark for the finale. Um, and that scenario is, is one that's really grown, over, grown on me over time. But we still got to get there because the next scenario is not going to be <laughs> not going to be easy. Uh, yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll hopefully we do not end up on the wrong side of some permadeath here because uh, that is not fun. And uh, 
then you really might see a grown man cry. But that is it. Uh, always good to get Arkham. This is where my channel started. Uh, it's obviously branched out a bit since. And uh, the Arkham videos might not get the views that uh, Spirit Island gets or Maze Knight gets or Gaia Project or Dawn of the Zeds or whatever else I feature. But uh, still uh, close to my heart and, and uh, kind of love kind of doing this. Um, yeah, I see that. Phoenix Knight says Patrice wheeling her hand every turn is definitely a pain, at least for me. It takes a bit. I think like a lot of the new characters, like I used to be able to play like one scenario with a character and it was like, all right, I get it. We're good. Uh, and now I find myself like building in like games. I've said this before, like games are like an elaborate dance and you just kind of to dance. Well, you got to learn the steps, right? If you're doing a, if you're doing a, a, a choreographed dance, you got to learn the steps. Otherwise you're not going to do it well. Uh, and I feel like with, even with Silas, um, but with Patrice, like there's like a hitch that I build into my tempo to make sure that I'm going through the steps. Right. And I think that's where talking to yourself can really help, you know, and just kind of go through, go, especially the upkeep phases, go through them pretty methodically with Silas. When you're doing a test, go through that methodically, um, because you have to make sure that you're getting the most out of your, um, your benefits. I mean, Tony Morgan even is remembering an enemy came out. Oh, I'm putting a bounty on it, right? Uh, Ursula, I went to a new location. Oh, I can do a free investigate action. Um, like just all those things that you now have to remember with the the, the investigators starting with Forgotten Age and, and going after that, but especially with Dream Eaters and especially with uh, the, um, the Circle Undone. So, you know, we'll see. I haven't done too much with the, um, the Innsmouth um, I, I've played Silas so much because I ha I've had his novella forever and I, I've played the crap out of that one. Uh, I haven't done too much with the Innsmouth Conspiracy version of Silas. I haven't decided which version I'm going to do in four weeks here. But, um, you know, from what I've seen, it's kind of, again, more Amanda is like a very, like, you know, thinking through that, uh, her thing with getting a card, putting it under you, that can be committed to every test now. What does that mean? You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff to go along with with that calculus, but um, you know, very very cool characters though. I mean, that's that's for sure. I mean, it's you know, the variety is really cool. Uh, I think the variety is kind of hit my saturation point. You know, we'll see what the next cycle is and whether or not I jump on board. I don't. I I think I'm probably good here, but um, you know, the the hours of play <laughs> that is possible just with all these investigators is so good. Um. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Daniel? Uh, Daniel uh, says the home psychology with solo playthroughs. Talking to yourself can really help. Yes, yes, I approve this message. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, but cool. I will babble on long enough if you let me. So, uh, my uh, my Mrs. Playthroughs has things to do. I'm gonna go let her do them. Uh, two weeks. We are doing a live playthrough of fraction. Nope. Starlight. Starlight takes its form. We're going to do a level 5 playthrough against France. Starlight was one of the spirits that I was uh, very strongly told that I was undervaluing. So I am going to, uh, I have learned my lesson a little bit. So I'm looking forward to diving more into Starlight and getting a really good playthrough of Starlight on the channel. Uh, speaking of Spirit Island, note in my last video, the uh, Powers on Forgotten scenario, there was a small mistake I made in setup. Anyone who's interested in that, you can go check the comments there and make sure that you do the setup for that scenario correctly. Uh, it was actually to my detriment, so I'm happy about that. Uh, would always prefer to make a mistake that is uh, harder, that makes it harder on me than one that makes it easier for obvious reasons. Um, so that's a thing. Uh, next Wednesday, though, we have uh, Solo Playthroughs Top 10 Solo Games, which I'm really excited about. So that'll be out on Wednesday. On Sunday, we have a Maze Night Solo Conquest with a Megapolis, uh, which is a a pretty pretty wild playthrough with uh, everyone's favorite elf lord uh, Norwas. So, uh, lots of cool things. Uh, and then look forward in May. Uh, we're going to have some new games. Pavlov's House was sent to me by the publisher. Going to have that on the channel. Same with City of Kings, which actually got a couple weeks before Pavlov's House. So I'll get those on in order. Um, and then I just got my class buyer too many bones. So we got some, some planning to do for June and July and uh, the rest of this year. So um, thanks for joining. Chat's always great. Um, I appreciate the support, likes, comments, any questions that come up, definitely put them in the comment section below. I'll get back to you. Yeah, that's cool, Daniel. Daniel says he's not an Arkham player, he's just meddling. Uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You got to give it a try. <laughs> 
or maybe not after what you saw tonight. I don't know. Maybe stay with stay with Spirit Island. It's a mage night, dude. Um, but yeah, that's cool. But look, uh, thanks again to everybody, and until next time, happy gaming.